Hello, this is Jeff Magado from the University of Oregon, and this is the prequel to an IALT-sponsored webinar that'll take place on August 17th. It's called Empowering Teachers to Author Their Own Materials, Anvil, H5P, and Beyond. I'll be doing the webinar with Shannon Spasova from Michigan State University, um, and we decided rather than spend our w valuable webinar time uh, showing how things work. We would try to do that a little bit here so you can watch this before or after the webinar and that'll give you a good sense of the tools that we're talking about, particularly ANVIL and H5P. ANVIL stands for a National Virtual Language Lab and our Language Center has been working on it for more than a decade and I would say the core mission hasn't changed that much in the past, uh, I think now 12 years, uh, which is to provide a speech platform for language students and to do it in a way that was low cost, i.e. free, uh, simple for teachers to author, and uh, um, embracing the spirit of all open source software that you know anyone can take it and modify it. So all of our modules that we uh, build for Anvil are available on Drupal.org give you a little sense of what you can find on the Anvil homepage, you'll definitely find a user's guide which will go into far more detail than I will about all of the various aspects from navigation to creating content to use to some scenarios that you can envision for using Anvil for. Like uh, other course management or learning management systems, Anvil has a way for you to create your own course to populate that with students, and the students can be um, um, enrolled just by, given, give, by being given an, uh, an access code. Um, so there's no sort of large bureaucratic mechanism involved in terms of who's a student in your class. And likewise, um, everybody in your class can be either a student or instructor, or at different times, one or the other. So roles can change, fair, or, or roles can be fairly flexible with Anvil. And maybe uh, the last slide that I'll show you from our user's guide is just what a typical use of Anvil looks like. Most users want to use this tool as a repository for speech. And then to use that repository for, as a way for learners to connect with one another, or to respond to one another, or to give feedback to one another and likewise for the instructor. And we'll see several um, variations on that theme here in, the, in, a, in a second. So this is, what a Anvil's, this is what Anvil looks like from maybe a teacher's perspective. This is all the courses um, in one teacher's course. Um, they can be bare bones or they can be graphically enhanced and whatever um, the teacher creates um, or edits with the gear icon on the right um, is what students will see as well. As you can imagine, various language instructors approach authoring courses with Anvil in different ways. It's a little bit fast there, but you can see on the left a Farsi course and on the right uh, um, a self-study language course here at the University of Oregon. Um, Courses can consist of content areas, like you see in the Farsi course, say for music and culture and cuisine, you know, where you can imagine various resources are gathered, uh, along with a way of perhaps responding to the resources. On the right, it's maybe more of a traditional course where um, there's content, again, in the weekly study guides, in the course introduction, and then there's a weekly reflection, which I assume students are posting audio files to. Here's what a German 411 course might look like. The front page big and bold in the middle. Um, graphics are easy to place in Anvil and move around. Um, and on the left you can see the core of the course, which is basically a weekly audio portfolio. Um, students again, you can see on the right the way our, our media recorder works. Um, students post an audio file and either teacher and well, in this case, only the teacher can give feedback on this. This is a portfolio, so other students don't see um, what 
their fellow students post, just the teacher. As I said, we've always done, um, Anvil's always been this container for speech, but um, shortly after we built it, people started saying, well, I want Task to be richer, I want Task to be well-informed, and so we, Anvil very much has um, other kinds of content in it, so whether you're trying to um, do a more sort of traditional set of instructions or task for students, um, you can see that the Anvil lesson tool provides you with multiple ways of putting both print and graphical uh, information in front of students. On the left you can see the way the menu works so that everything is pretty easily searched in terms of um, what's going on week one, week two, week three, and so on. And again, as I mentioned, the anything that can, can be embedded in any sort of web environment can certainly be done so in, in Anvil. And so here you just see uh, sort of a basic flipped learning kind of a task where students are in a group and they have one of three videos to watch before and so on. Um, so um, I guess I should also point out here that we have fairly flexible layouts and uh, we'll get into that in a little bit more. But notice that um, the previous slide had more of a full 100% width. Here you've got three quarters and one quarter and you can um, very flexibly move content around in Anvil, much more like a, a, a page layout program than, say, a traditional uh, course authoring tool. And what's new and what's sort of the focus of our uh, talk or our webinar is um, the latest addition to Anvil, which is the including of H5P, which is this rich set of HTML5 uh, tools, and the one I think that teachers at my school are most interested in is the interactive video tool, which allows uh, videos to be marked up in essence uh, in, um, in a fairly teacher-friendly way. So here's a video from a Portuguese teacher, and She's talking about how she became a teacher, and she wants her students to click on the words that stand for dolls and chalkboard, which I believe is quadro in bonecas. Uh, and what that looks like behind the scenes is perhaps what makes it um, pretty interesting. Um, so inside of Anvil Teacher View, you select the H5P tool you want, in this case interactive video. You pick your piece of media, audio or video. You decide on the kinds of interactions you want to include. So in the case of uh, here, we're doing um, a multiple choice interaction. The interaction is where the video can be paused. You can force the video to be paused, or, or you can let students do that on their own. And Shannon and I, will sh I'm sure, will get into that. Um, so chosen a multiple choice uh, interaction, and then of course the hard part, writing that good multiple choice question. Um, and that's what's happening in part four. Save that, and you've got an interaction. And it looks um, you're able to go on. So we'll take this apart a little bit more in detail, but you can see here's another kind of multiple choice interaction where students have, the video has been stopped and students have been asked to respond. So I think without talking any more about what Anvil can be, I'd like to jump right in and include, encourage you to do so before you visit the webinar. If you click on that link that you see on the left, the bit.ly link, 2D, uppercase Y, lowercase g, uppercase Q, lowercase y, x, you'll be able to uh, join this uh, sample course here and participate in some of the, the tasks that I'm going to talk about now. So I'm going to switch back to my desktop computer and um, go through these key functions one by one. Uh, so I can see from the number four that I have four different voice boards. Um, it's easy to create a voice board. 
as all I have to do is click on voice board and then move that new voice board into this folder here. You can create as many voice boards in a, full, in a course as you like. Um, typical practices include, you know, one a week. Um, and um, again, these kinds of voice boards work best when you're trying to get students to contribute to something or build on some knowledge about something. So here's just a simple example uh, from a conference a few months ago uh, where all of the participants were uh, Chinese speaking. So I asked them a question, you've now been in Eugene for a couple of weeks, how has your visit gone? And gave them a chance to respond. You can see that person number three responded in text and person number five responded in video. And some wrote in English and uh, some spoke in Chinese. I'll just give you a quick example, scrub through a little bit here just to show you how responsive Anvil can be. <laughs> So you can see that for conversation, video makes a big difference. Um, you know, the audio is not great here, but um, you know, it's two people in a crowded room uh, talking into a laptop. You can definitely get better results with the use of headsets, when, especially when people are working on their own, like for pronunciation practice. Um, Another, you know, kind of voice board is where you give them a prompt, perhaps, you know, and this is a very simple and common task, you know, here's two photos, see if you can find the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. And again, with the same participants, see what they have to say. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 看有一个下角, um, if you're wondering why they're not looking at each other, they're looking at a screen where they're also actually seeing those photos at the top. Um, and, you know, you can see from the length of time, they talk for a couple of minutes. Um, and to resolve or find seven differences in a photo in a couple of minutes is pretty fast. It usually takes me longer than that for that uh, task. Um, so every in this voice board, everybody who wants to participate, you know, their 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 posts are public and are seen by all. Um, the teacher can at any point either go in and edit them or give a comment or delete, and so can other participants. So you can see that uh, uh, participant two, participant six, and participant four all commented on participant five. They thought they did a good job. So, you know, it's, it's no small task to get, you know, full screen video working. Um, we think we've done a pretty good job making that happen. Um, but the payback or the, the cost involved is that uh, um, there is some rendering time once the recording is made. So for about a two minute video like this, it's not available to the students for approximately four or five minutes. It's usually about double whatever the length of the recording is. But once there, you know, the streaming is pretty darn good and we, we think that it's um, you know, a small price to pay to have high quality and, and full screen video. So those are just two examples of voice boards. I'm going to go back out to the main and show you briefly a portfolio. Um, again, the only difference between the two is that in the portfolio, only the unique individual's post is, uh, is, is apparent. Um, again, you can have whatever kind of stimulus you want. This is the teacher placing this here. She does that by the edit button. And she has a nice large video. We've got a special tool for adding media. It's kind of nice. If you have a web link, you just put the web link in if it's embeddable. If it's something you're uploading yourself, our tool handles that pretty well. 
If you want to record it on the fly, you can do that. And if you want to use something that you have in your library, they're all there too. So if I'm looking for a video, I can see that I have these available. And I have quite a few available, so I might want to hopefully remember it by name. But try to make it as easy as possible, not just to get existing web content into video, but content that you yourself have access to and that's peculiar to your students' work, of course. Um, the reflection process is, as I said, pretty straightforward. Again, the video playback is this kind coming from Vimeo, so it's not our servers. Um, but if I wanted to participate, I add a comment. I can enable my audio. That's our audio recorder. And as I begin to record now, it's doing its thing. If I hit stop, it's now done. If I save that, it will be uploaded. If uh, I don't like it, I want to Play it back. And as I begin to record now, it's doing its thing. And because I have two microphones, you're not going to hear it. Uh, but uh, trust me, that's the playback. And once we hit click on save, uh, important stuff becomes part of the conversation here. So that's how simple it is to get people to add to um, a portfolio. And there were 20 or 100 students in the, in the course, they would all appear here as individuals. Because again, this is a private, um, you know, sort of a one-way channel between the, the teacher and uh, in the student, although it could be a pair of students. So we've looked at both voice boards and uh, portfolios are two sort of core tools. 90% of the people using Anvil use one of these two tools. Um, but as I said, there's lots of possibilities for having different kinds of content on an Anvil page. And the lesson tool allows you to easily, again, by clicking on the edit page, I can, you know, change the name of that very quickly. Perhaps more importantly, that's the title page. If I want to work with the content here, I can edit both the content of this particular panel like if I decide I really don't like that, I can get rid of it. And the panels rearrange themselves. Earlier I mentioned that we can have different layouts as well. That's controlled with the Edit Layout button. So we have both a two, one column, two column, three column possibility. They're all three responsive, so that means when you're looking at them on a mobile device, they conform down to sort of a single column in an elegant way. But more importantly, it means that you, know, you can move content around as you deem fit. You know, so what's the most important thing? That's probably what you want it to be at the top. Um, if you decide that it's not the handout that you see here, or if you decide that maybe the instructions should be here, it's just a matter of dragging over and changing. And things change appropriately like that. If I want everything in the three-quarter view, um, so lots of choices none of which are saved uh, until you click that. So I'm going to cancel out and let it go. But the content editing possibilities of uh, a page in Anvil are quite rich. And I would say they just got quite a bit richer with the addition of H5P. So what we've done with H5P is given 
the same look and feel to other kinds of content or other kinds of pages in Anvil, um, but instead of our own content or our own tools being behind the scenes doing the work, it's H5P doing that. And so if I click on Edit here now, you'll see something similar to what we saw in the earlier slide at the, at the outset. So this is a short film about how somebody became a teacher. That's what we can see in the title. That's all editable. I mentioned that, Ant, that H5P has many different kinds of tools. Um, I haven't even begun to explore most of them. Right now, my own focus is on interactive video and course presentation. They seem to give me the most bang for my buck. Uh, I'm not so, I don't need audio so much because I already have the audio capabilities of Anvil. But you guys can see that H5P is becoming a really rich source of content creation. Um, and Anvil allows you to display or make that content right inside of it. So I've chosen my interactive video. I have to choose what kind of interactions I want to have. As you can see, I've already created some. This here just does a little pop-up. Então, acho que desde criança eu eu gostava de de ensinar. Want to edit that? All I was doing there was giving the students sort of a heads up on what was happening. You know, pay attention. Um, here's what you're going to see. Um, you have, uh, Shannon's going to go into more of the, the formatting possibilities with H5P. What I just wanted to emphasize here is that um, Anvil is very agnostic about what other tools can work inside of it. It's very, very flexible, and H5P has given us a rich um, set of tools that um, have a lot to offer for oral, oral uh, language teaching. And I can't wait to uh, show you more of that and talk about it on August 17th. So I'm going to come back out and um, stop for there. Um, I hope that's given you enough of an overview of what Anvil is, how it works, um, that it's available to anybody, it's free. Um, you just need to sign up for a for a course, and once you have a course, uh, once you have an account, you can uh, start creating courses um, fairly easily. If I go back up to that, I'm ready to start working on my next course. Hope to see you on August 17th. Uh, thanks for listening in. Bye-bye.